Hey guys, for phonics and language today, I want you to review phonics charts six and seven. I know they're ones we've practiced a lot, but I want you to continue practicing for the rest of the year. So those are the ones we're practicing today. Make sure you practice them out loud and I will attach them to this assignment again. Then moving forward today in phonics and language, we are talking about adjectives again. Yes, we're talking about them again. Adjectives are a very important thing you need to be able to find in sentences. So it's something that we're going to continue reviewing quite a few times. So adjectives tell us about a noun. They describe something in more detail. They give us more information. So they could talk about size, how many, what color, how it feels, how it looks, how it sounds, how it tastes, how it behaves, how it smells. Any words that explain more detail about a person, a place, or a thing. So today, we're going to actually find them in some sentences. And I'm going to show you some tips um, for how you're going to find them in sentences. Now, we learned that there's two questions we can ask ourselves. Once we find the noun, we can ask ourselves what kind or how many. So I'm going to use this today as we look through these sentences and draw arrows to show which things describe what. So let's look at these sentences. What I'm going to do is I'm going to underline the nouns, but first I'm going to read the sentence. So number one says five children enjoyed a delicious snack of juicy grapes, sweet oranges, ripe bananas, and crunchy nuts. So kind of a long sentence, lots of descriptive words in there, lots of adjectives. So we're gonna find them. This is what we're gonna do. We are going to underline the nouns first. So nouns are person, place, or thing. The first person I see is children. So I'm gonna underline children. Then we have snack is a thing. I'm gonna underline snack. And grapes is a thing. I'm going to underline grapes. And oranges is a thing. It's a fruit. Bananas is a thing. Another fruit. And nuts is a thing. So those are all my nouns in this sentence. Now I'm going to find the adjectives. So I'm going to ask myself what I'm looking for. Size, a number, a color, feeling, look, sounds, taste, behave, smells. So the first one I see is a number and it's five. Five describes what? Five describes the number of children. So I'm actually gonna draw an arrow from five to children. How many children? Five. Five is describing the children. Five is not describing enjoyed. Five enjoyed. Five what? Five children, five describes the children. I can have the sentence without five, but I can't have the sentence without children. So moving forward, enjoyed a delicious snack. My next one would be what kind of snack? Delicious. So I'm gonna circle delicious. Des delicious describes what? It describes snack. What kind of snack? Delicious, okay? Next we have of juicy grapes. And juicy describes the grapes. What kind of grapes? Juicy grapes. So I'm gonna draw an arrow here. Then we have sweet oranges. What kind of oranges? Sweet is my adjective. Sweet describes the oranges. So I'm gonna draw my arrow to oranges. Next we have ripe bananas. What kind of bananas? Ripe ones. So I'm gonna draw my arrow, what kind of bananas? Ripe bananas, ripe describes the bananas, and crunchy nuts. So what kind of nuts? Crunchy nuts. Crunchy describes nuts. So that one had a lot in it. We're gonna do this. These two don't have quite as few, but we're gonna take a look at them. Sentence number two says, we enjoyed warm bowls of creamy soup. So <clears throat> first, we have we, but there's nothing describing we, so I'm not going to underline that one. Then enjoyed, 
warm bowls of creamy soup. My next noun I see is bowls. That's a thing that I can put stuff in. And creamy soup. Soup is a thing I eat. So my sentence could say, we enjoyed bowls of soup. And you would know what I'm talking about. That would be a complete sentence. It has a subject, it has a verb, you know what's happening. However, when we use adjectives, we make it way more interesting. So what kind of bowls? Warm bowls. Warm is my adjective. Instead of just plain bowls, they're warm. And it describes bowls. What kind of bowls? Warm. And then instead of just soup, we have creamy soup. Creamy is my adjective. It describes soup. Okay, now this next one's a little bit trickier. Let's read it. It says, four black and white skunks walked in a straight line. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. My subject, my noun, my very first noun that the sentence is about is actually all the way over here, skunks. Four black and white are not nouns, but skunks is a noun. Walked in a straight line, line is a noun. So my sentence could be skunks walked in a line. Without any adjectives, skunks walked in a line. You know what's happening. It's got a subject, it's got a verb. We know it, it makes sense. But when we use adjectives, it makes it way more interesting. So here's the trick. How many skunks? Four skunks. So I'm gonna circle four and I'm gonna draw my line all the way over here. So, so far in these sentences, the adjectives were right next to the noun. This one's a little bit trickier. Four describes the skunks. Black also describes the skunks and so does white and does not count as an adjective. But black describes what kind of skunks? Black skunks and white skunks. All three of these words all describe this one noun. You can have more than one adjective describing one thing. Just like you are more than one thing, you might be tall and skinny and long hair and freckles. You could have all these things. We can use more than one word to describe a noun. So all three of these, four, black, white, all describe skunks. We're gonna draw all the arrows to skunks. Next, we have walked in a straight line. What kind of line? Straight, straight describes the line. So I'm gonna circle straight and I'm going to draw an arrow from straight to line. So. As you can see, most of the time your adjective is gonna be the word right in front of your noun. But down here you can also see that we can have more than one word and so the words might not be exactly in front of the noun like the word for describes skunks. For does not describe black. You don't have for black or for white unless you have for black crayons or for white crayons or for black and white skunks. So be careful of that as you do your paper. Let's look. Today you're doing phonics and language, page 261 to 262. At the top is a reminder of what we learned today. And section one, it says, read the sentences, circle the adjectives that describe the underlying nouns. Draw a small arrow from each adjective to the noun it describes. So just like I did right here on this, that's what you're gonna do in the paragraph, except for they already have the nouns underlined. You just have to decide what adjectives describe those nouns and draw the arrows. So you draw circles and arrows, circle the adjectives, draw an arrow to the noun it describes. Section two says, read the sentences, color the circle beside the correct word. So there's, for the first sentence, there's an orange box. You're gonna decide between those two words. The second sentence, you're, there's a pinkish, peachish box. You're gonna decide, decide between those two words to fit in the blank. And then the third sentence is another orange box and you're gonna decide between those two words which one fits in the blank, which one makes more sense. Then we move down to dictation. You are finishing the sentence here. 
One sentence only, finish what I say. It says, Grandpa wears a straw hat when he works outside. I'll read it again. Grandpa wears a straw hat when he works outside. One more time. Grandpa wears a straw hat when he works outside. Don't forget, it is a sentence, so you must use punctuation. Okay, on the back, on page 262, listen carefully. Section one says, choose an adjective, a subject, and a verb to write your own sentence. You will need to add some of your own words to finish your sentence. So, you're gonna pick an adjective from that first box. You're gonna pick a subject from the second box. And you're gonna pick a verb from the third box and you're gonna make your own sentences. You, can, you do not have to pick them all in order. You can pick wherever you want, whichever ones you want, but you do need to write four sentences total, one for each paw print on the left. So, for example, if you just choose the top three, Fuzzy Ant Eats. That is not a complete sentence. You will have to add more words to write a more complete sentence. Remember, sentences must have a capital letter at the beginning and punctuation at the end. So you must write four sentences and you must use words from those boxes. So your adjectives from that box, your subjects from the middle box, and your verb is from the fourth, the third box, sorry. Section two. Write a camping noun next to each adjective. Remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing. It said write a camping noun. So, the first one is done for you. It says colorful, and they wrote tents, colorful tents. So, you're going to pick your own camping words. Whatever words, nouns, that have to do with camping, you're going to fit them on those lines. So, five blank, friendly blank warm blank, green blank, delicious blank. You're gonna fill those in with camping words. They need to make sense. Um, moving down to section three, add the suffix ing to the root words. So remember your suffix rules. As you write these new words, you're gonna write the whole word on the line for both of those words. That's it for phonics and language. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you later. Bye.